Hello. Hey there, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good. Good. So give me a second, eh? Let me just uh, look for the email. All right. <laughs> How are you today? Good, good. I'm uh, enjoying the sunny, sunny weather for sure. <laughs> that is good. That is good. Yeah. How about you? Uh, lots to do, I guess. <laughs> Just enough. trying to get stuff done. Uh, yeah. A bunch of events uh, having to be planned uh, outside of school. So yeah. Makes sense. How about you? Just yeah. school. School's, uh, you know, I'm home stretch here, I guess, right? Lots of kind of final projects and into exams. Mm -hmm. So keeping busy with school for sure. But, uh, you know, hopefully it'll, you know, be over sooner than I can think about it and yeah. <laughs> move into the summer a little bit. Yeah. Well, that's good. And, um, <clears throat> like, are you, are you doing like full time classes as well while doing your, yeah, just, Oh. Yeah, right now I'm in I'm in five classes um, this semester. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's been, Why it's so been many? A, it, uh, well, I guess for athletics we have to take twelve units anyways, which is usually four. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm in computer engineering, so they tend to engineering department tends to recommend you take a whole bundle of classes anyways. So um, you kind of have to take a bunch sometimes. I mean, I think I'm I'm in I think sixteen or seventeen units this semester um there's yeah. certainly a lot, but i mean there's semesters where they recommend doing 21 which is just absurd and no one really does that but you still end up with a few semesters of five classes just to keep up wow yeah but okay, okay. that is pretty intense it, it is pretty intense the good thing is the classes are I, they're enjoyable though so mm. um it makes it a bit easier to kind of convince yourself to do the work and you know if they were classes that i hated it would be It'd be painful for sure, but a lot of them is is pretty interesting, so that's good. Okay, wow. Well. Um, okay, so before we begin, um, what we're doing right now is uh, like <clears throat> Rex, kind of. Um, okay, so what we've noticed in Rex is that a lot of um, students are not generally aware of the student athletes. Yeah. And uh, what we're trying to do is to bring the athletes out to the students and try and promote um, the whole SFU athletics team as well as the players to students and try to like bring them together. So um, this will be recorded if it's okay with you. Absolutely. And um, and yeah, we will um, once the editing is done, we will bump it up to our YouTube channel, and then um, eventually uh, we might ask some athletes on for um, Instagram lives just to do like short interviews with how they are and and um, and like <clears throat> um, information about the sports and like why they why they got started so okay. cool. yeah so as we begin um, do you mind sharing um, who you are um, the sport you play and a brief overview of uh, what exactly it is for sure yeah so my name is Ryan Stolies I'm in my fourth year on the SFU golf team um, I um, we're uh, sorry. I'm at uh, in the SFU uh, computer engineering program, um, so also my fourth year there as well. Um, obviously on the golf team, so you know lots of people tend to be fairly familiar with the sport of golf. But you know, in the gist of it is, you have a a white ball and you're trying to put it in a hole that tends to be really far away, and they tend to put all sorts of stuff in the way between uh, between the ball and the hole, and so tends to be pretty fun. I mean, particularly over this past year through the pandemic, lots of people have picked up golf for the first time, which has been great to see. Um, but there's all, all sorts of kind of places to kind of get involved with golf. And um, kind of it's one of those sports where at any level, it is something that can be interesting and engaging. And, you know, it's, you know, one of those sports which can be super frustrating to get kind of attached to. But as soon as you kind of hit that one good shot, you kind of get hooked and just like, oh, I want to do that again. And you're kind of hooked for life, it seems, a lot of the time. So how did you get started in golfing? It was, I've always kind of been into sports growing up. So, I mean, I, you know, throughout elementary school, I'd always play on the basketball and volleyball teams. And um, throughout the summers, I play on the soccer team, just like a recreational soccer team or, um, you know, a rep, rep, rep one as well. Um, 
and ended up getting cut from my soccer team in the like grade seven or eight. And so I was looking for something to try out in the summer and my mom signed me up for a golf camp. That was kind of like a weekly thing throughout the summer and essentially just loved it and started golfing more regularly from there. And so I think that might have been grade seven or eight summer. And I ended up kind of getting a membership at a local municipal course um, and played, you know, 50 rounds that summer because I was just loved it so much and got wow. hooked. And started um, 50 rounds of golf. Yeah, oh, it was it was yeah, intense. Great summer. I think my brother was actually working at the golf course, so yeah. my mom would drop him off in the morning, and then when he she'd go to pick him up, she'd drop me off, and I'd go play in the afternoon. And um, yeah, no, it was a lot of fun. And so I just kind of got into golf and had you know phenomenal people kind of guiding the way and kind of showing me. You know, I had coaches that were helping me. Um, you know, just kind of introduced me to the sport of golf. So you know, mm -hmm. actually guide me on. So I wasn't just out there randomly, but I had people kind of, hey, like, here's kind of how you can, what you can work on to get better and um, help me kind of improve my swing and um, kind of just grew from there. I think I, um, you know, loved it that summer and kept doing it even throughout the winter as well, kind of in addition to hockey, which I played growing up my whole life. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, it was a sport that I didn't need any push to continue to play. And my parents never really, um, you know, were on top of me to do any certain thing. They kind of just let me, you know, let my interest drive my actions and um golf certainly took it took a life took a life at his own i think my parents spent more effort, um trying to get me to not golf and kind of balance my time a little bit elsewhere um so it was certainly a lot of fun to you just play golf and i just kind of kept getting better and started playing tournaments and um you know four or five years later i ended up at sfu and now i'm here so and that is that is a pretty amazing life story <laughs> Certainly, yeah. It's like, a fun journey for sure. What What do you love about the sport? Because I, you mentioned um, how you came from team sports, and then you eventually moved to golf, which is, I feel, it's more of an individualized sport, right? Certainly, I think the one thing I really enjoyed about golf was just the fact that you're never done with it in a sense. Like I think you know, it's it's your responsibility the way that you perform, and I think you know, in a team sport, you're certainly there is the individual aspect to it. I mean, I played hockey the most growing up and, um, Do you still play hockey? I wish I did. No, I, I stopped oh. playing hockey in my, um, once I came to SFU, um, I haven't, uh, have not actually, I don't even think I've played a, even a recreational game of hockey since then, which I certainly regret. Oh, but, um, it's been, been tough with, with everything going on here, but, um, I honestly, I think I just love the continuous challenge of it. Um, and how, the work that you put in as much as it can be frustrating and you kind of seems like you're going backwards, eventually it kind of does pay off. And, you know, the success of your team is, you know, in hockey, obviously it depends on, you know, your effort and kind of the team as a whole, but in golf, it's very much, you know, your responsibility. And so the score that you're going to go and shoot is going to be a direct result of the work that you put in and the preparation that you put in, you know, in all aspects of the game, whether it be, you know, your swing, whether it be your mind, um, whether it be knowing the course, um, so I think, you know, especially as a junior golf growing up, just that kind of drive to um, just get better and actually see, hey, look, like I have something I want to do. I'm going to set a goal to do it and a plan to do it. And I can actually get there. And it's not really dependent on anything else. It's kind of, it's within my control. And that was something I think I really enjoyed about golf and um, has certainly helped in many other ways as well. I mean, I think golf taught me goal setting um, better than anything I could have asked for. And I think I'm a cer certainly an avid goal setter um you know love making plans and stuff like that and so um i think golf certainly set me on the way to, to doing stuff like that do you feel that the skills you learned from golf and like the self the self drive actually um, transfers over to your academics and life in general then? absolutely yeah i think you know a lot of times you know especially as a junior golfer growing up i think like there's so many opportunities to develop habits um, mm -hmm. whether it be in university, I think, you know, a lot of times kind of coming into first year, it tends to be a bit of a shock with, um, oh my goodness, there's so much work and you have to kind of find habits that are going to work to kind of keep up with the workload in university. I think, you know, actually playing golf and realizing, Hey, like if I actually want to accomplish this thing, I need to be disciplined in the way that I spend my time and the way that I'm practicing. And that I think same kind of mentality doesn't go away when you go home and start studying. Right. I think, um, you know, my, my dedication to try to do something effective with golf, you know, tightens your timelines, for example, and now all of a sudden you're at home and your homework, which 
you know, maybe you were going to spend four hours on now you only have two hours for, but you still have to get it done. Um, so it just requires you to be a lot more focused with it. So I think, you know, part of, you know, the transition, like kind of this goal setting and being disciplined with my, my time comes from a necessity and just mm -hmm. training off all the time and needing to do that. And also just the transferable skills of, um, setting a goal and setting a plan and sticking to it. Um, yeah, certainly think that golf's benefited academically. Um, no question about that. How do you, how do you actually balance your time with school and golf? Do you do like do anything outside of just like doing your five classes and golf training? Sir, I certainly keep, keep pretty busy. Um, I'm actually currently the president of the student athlete advisory committee. So our, um, at within the athletes, we basically have this, we call ourselves a SAC. Um, mm -hmm. And so we basically made up of representatives from virtually every team. I think this year we're missing one of the teams, but um, it's about 35 people. And generally we kind of, you know, in a normal year, we focus on kind of running events to um, help raise money and kind of improve kind of student athlete experience from running events that student athletes like going to, such as bowling nights or um, kind of an Olympics event or um, pub nights even. And, you know, in addition, we're also raising money kind of through bake sales. And so over the past two years and into next year as well, I'll actually continue leading that. So that's certainly been a, um, an area where I spend quite a bit of time as well. But in terms of kind of managing the time holistically, it really comes down to, I think just using my time as effectively as I can to make sure I'm like planning and intentional with it. Um, so basically every single day, I more or less start with, um, you know, a planner of all the things that I kind of want to get done and where it's scheduled into my day. Um, and a lot of times I find with school, there's so many kind of little tasks that you can kind of get, you know, sidetracked by. And so one of the big things I've done is actually just setting, here are the big three things that I want to get done today. And let's make sure that if, at, at an absolute minimum, let's get those three things. And then we'll get to the rest of the list later. Because a lot of times, you know, you have an assignment that's due in a week and, you know, be great to start it now because it's kind of easy. But, you know, that test that you have on Wednesday is um, a little bit more important than you should. Mm -hmm. you, know, you don't want to study for it. You kind of just be a bit more disciplined with where you spend your time. And so I find you know, starting on my days like that, it kind of gives me a direction. I don't end up, you know, in the middle of the day, kind of feeling yeah, late, around. Kind of getting distracted. Exactly. Yeah. I kind of just, I stay, stay a bit more on, on, on target with uh, the things I need to get done. And, you know, I certainly think that, uh, you know, I guess there's that saying, it's like, if you want something done, give it to a busy person. It's just if when you're, when you're feeling kind of stressed out and have lots of things to do, you end up just kind of finding a way to get things done. And yeah. uh, I certainly think that tends to be the case with me a lot of the time. Nice. <laughs> it, it kind of reminds me of um, like bees, where everything they do is intentional. Mm. So yeah, <laughs> that's pretty amazing. Huh. And so back again to your sport. Um, do you have any tips and advice for people who are planning to to get into your sport, who are interested in getting in your sport, but um, are not really sure how to? Because you also mentioned that there's been up, an uptake of um people picking up golf, which I also have noticed because um, every time I drive past them, there's a golf course in, I think, Pitt Meadows or Maple Ridge. Yep. Um, it's, it's packed. <laughs> you always see cars there. I'm like, ah, oh, it's cool, man. How does this happen? Yeah. No, I mean, in terms of picking up golf, like there are so many different ways to just try to pick things up. I think, um, you know, one of the easiest ways is just to go to a driving range and mm -hmm. Um, just hit, hit a bucket of balls. I think they're, especially in BC, they tend to be, you know, relatively cheap compared to elsewhere because they are open year round. So uh, you can generally, if you've never touched a golf club before, you can generally show up at any driving range, probably be, you know, less than $10 for a bucket of balls, maybe another five or 10 to rent a golf club um, and just kind of start swinging away. Um, you know, there'll be other people there that you can kind of look over your shoulder for and kind of try to figure out what they're doing or um, even just go, go with a friend who's golfed before. I know, um, you know, myself included and a lot of golfers, it's always kind of fun to kind of introduce somebody to the gate, to the sport. And so, um, chances are, you know, somebody that's tried golf before. Um, and so they're usually pretty happy to, to introduce you to it, but, you know, outside of just going to a driving range, I think, you know, golf is the most fun when you're actually playing the sport, right. It's kind of golf's one of the kind of an, a weird sport where, you know, people actively seek out practice when they don't necessarily, um, you know, play the sport competitively. Like I think about, you know, recreational hockey leagues. I mean, how many recreational hockey teams have practices? Not really. You just go and you play once a week and it's lots of fun. Well, 
you know, mm. people go when they practice golf, which is great. I think it's, it's a lot of fun to do that. You get to try certain things out. And I think it kind of speaks to the challenge that golf has, but mm -hmm. you know, if you're trying to get on a golf course, I mean, a, if you're kind of new to the sport, a big golf course can be fairly intimidating um, to try out, especially with, you know, all sorts of other people that are there and just um, not really necessarily understanding all the different parts of it. But fortunately in BC or in uh, the Vancouver area, there's lots of pitch and putt courses. So um, mm -hmm. golf Burnaby, obviously where SFU is, has a Kensington and a Central Park one, um, which are, you know, great courses. I, I love playing them. I haven't played them as much as I want to, but they're, you know, all the holes are like a hundred yards or so. Uh, they tend to be pretty straightforward. It's absolutely perfect for kind of just getting into the game. Mm -hmm. um, so if there's, you know, any kind of situation that was like, you know, hey, I want to go try the game of golf, like that would definitely be where I'd kind of say that's kind of the best place to go. Um, they have rentals as well. If you want to like, they give out rentals all the time if you need them. Um, so, and it's generally pre pretty affordable as well to do that. And, um, but obviously as you kind of mentioned, it's, it's been pretty busy as well. So yeah. you know, try to show up early and get a tea time, but. <laughs> yeah. And um, <clears throat> hmm. so you also, you mentioned that you are doing five classes Wait, what's your major again? Computer engineering. Computer engineering. What what got you into it? And like, um, yeah. So so what got you into computer engineering? For sure. So a bit of an interesting. So I guess growing up, I've, I kind of always wanted to go into engineering at university. It's kind of you know, both my parents went to university. My grandparents actually went to university as well. Um, so kind of it's just kind of you know going to university has kind of just been a, a natural kind of end goal for me. Um, in terms of where I wanted to go after high school. And my dad is actually an engineer um, as well. And although I, I'll, I'll admit to him as well, I, I don't actually, I'm not super interested in his type of engineering, which is environmental engineering. Um, there's certainly lots of interesting things with sustainable engineering, but there's lots of policy and reading in his versions of engineering, which doesn't excite me quite as much as, uh, as maybe I'm looking for. But uh, so I, I know I always knew that I wanted to do engineering. And so when I figured out I was coming to SFU, um, mm -hmm. One of the things in kind of deciding on the school I wanted to go to is obviously looking for a good fit from a golf standpoint, but also for an engineering program. And so mm -hmm. SFU has it's a bit of an, I'll call it unusual um, engineering kind of classifications. They don't have kind of chemical or civil or, um, you know, management, stuff like that. So kind of some of the, the basic types of engineering that you kind of think about when you first think about an engineer, um, mm -hmm. but it's very much more um, digitized, which Personally, you know, having been here, I think it's super relevant for kind of the future we're going to. I mean, um, you know, computer competency is just an incredible skill to have <laughs> in our society today. And for sure, when I first kind of started, I kind of was actually moving into, I started in engineering physics and actually was there for about two and a half years until basically the pandemic began um, in kind of March of, of 2020, I guess it was. Um, and I actually, I took taken some course in the summer and kind of, I'd taken some physics courses in that spring semester and, you know, got through them, but didn't like, wasn't in love with them. And then in those kind of first couple months of the summer semester, where all of a sudden I was inside a lot, I had a ton of time to myself. I was actually living on my own. I ended up kind of just picking up coding. I was like, Hey, you know what? I want to, you know, build something. I want to just try putting something together. So I actually that summer essentially learned how to program a website um, and did that throughout the summer and ended up realizing it's like, you know, like I actually really enjoy doing this. And the first co-op I'd had ended up being like a computer engineering based or a software developer co-op, um, but still kind of felt cautious about actually doing that kind of as my degree. And then kind of was, throughout that summer, I started kind of coding way more and ended up being something I would do, you know, a couple hours a day, a lot of the time. And just realized I was like, I love this. And I want to do this kind of for the, probably for the rest of my life. And mm -hmm. um, I figured, you know, computer engineering is probably where my interest lies a lot more. A lot of the things I'm just looking up for fun. Um, and I'm just curious about how things work. And so ended up making the switch into computer engineering um, that summer and have been there over the so past. So you went year. from physics to computer engineering. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Now that is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> certainly, yeah. So it was a good transition. I mean, I certainly think there was lots of things in that physics program I was interested in, but mm -hmm. I've always kind of been, you know, after university, I see myself kind of doing something that's a lot more um, kind of applicable in terms of like, it's, it's less research-based. I don't, as much mm -hmm. as I find that area kind of interesting, just from a curiosity standpoint, um, I really kind of see myself doing something that's like, I want to build something that people can actually use. 
The uh, flight sciences, eh? Certainly, yeah. <laughs> uh, I felt like the engineering physics program was kind of more geared towards the research side rather than, mm -hmm. um, you know, a, a real life application for tomorrow. Um, yeah. you know, kind of a real life application for, you know, 2070. Um, so it wasn't quite what I was looking for, I think. And so I ended up, I've, you know, been absolutely pleased and thrilled with the switch that I've made. Um, I've mm -hmm. been enjoying the courses so far. So. Dang, that's great. And so for courses itself, um, how have you been coping with the new online class format? It's been, it's been interesting. I mean, I certainly think there's lots of benefits to it just in terms of the flexibility it provides. Um, you know, if I miss a class or, you know, I have, you know, go and want to practice afternoon, like, you know, this afternoon, it's a beautiful sunny day. I can watch the, the recorded lecture online. And that's been super, um, super handy, which has been great. I think having kind of just an online environment has actually allowed me to kind of do lots of different things because all of a sudden, you know, it's almost like I have a, you know, I can travel, I can teleport essentially because you know, I'm in one meeting at one spine, and then I all of a sudden I'm somewhere else where, where obviously you can't do that um, when you're actually going to physical locations. But, you know, there's a benefit to that in terms of being able to take kind of do lots and, um, you know, in terms of handling workload, it's all of a sudden I don't have to deal with traveling all over the place mm -hmm. to, you know, to go, like obviously going to practice is still, you know, moving there, but, you know, I'm saving, you know, an hour a day kind of getting to and from classes and um, stuff like that. So I think that's certainly been a benefit and the flexibility I have if I don't want to do my class right now. I mean, um, all of my profs this semester at least have been recording it. And so I've been able to, to look at it later. Mm -hmm. you know, with that said, there's certainly lots lost in the fact that you don't necessarily have those natural breaks between classes, a chance to kind mm -hmm. of get up and physically move around. So I certainly have found myself um, a few times this semester just, you know, feeling very overwhelmed um, yeah. with all the different things that have been, you know, going on and, you know, just the workload that's been there. And I certainly think, and I think just about everyone that I've spoken to doing classes is, it seems like there is just, there's more work this year than an usual year. And I think, you know, part of that is intentional um, from the side of the, the school in terms of, you know, it's harder to proctor and give tests. And so they've moved to a more ap applicable learning in terms of mm -hmm. more assignments or more project-based stuff, which, you know, in theory, I think it's a fantastic idea. I think I learned far more from doing an assignment than I do from a test. Um, mm -hmm. But the flip side of that is that it tends to take a bit longer to go through a project and an assignment than it does a test. So all of a sudden, you know, you replaced one test with two assignments. Um, you know, now you've actually just added to your workload. And so I think, you know, even though it's a bit maybe a minor change in one course or another, you, know, you add all, all those up and all of a sudden you're feeling like there's a lot of stuff to do. And so I think there's, you know, certainly lots of positives that have come from, you know, the online learning environment. And yeah. uh, you know, I don't think one of them has been a reduction of stress, unfortunately, but <laughs> it certainly provided lots of different kind of the ways to do things and um, just kind of, you know, keeping my options, kind of keeping things flexible in terms of the way that I spend my time. And, and that's certainly been nice to deal with. And on that topic, um, how do you make sure that your work and your school don't really overlap. How do you make sure that there is a um, clear line between them? Because a lot of times people feel burnt out because the the separation that this physical separation that used to be uh, taking classes in person would be ten minutes break in between each class, the mm -hmm. walking from class to class, and then the transit from maybe home or dorm to school. So yeah. with everything now just like you, you literally wake up, computer, yeah. and then computer the whole day. So how do you make sure that you have enough time to, to separate yourself and to make sure that, um, yeah, you just have that separation? For sure. I mean, I certainly like that. I mean, this right here is my bed, right? So it's directly behind me. I you know, can literally roll out of bed and touch my computer if I need to. Um, but Truthfully, I think that's kind of one of the areas I probably struggle with a little bit in terms of actually creating that physical separation, um, you know, partly because of my environment. I mean, it's tough when, you know, I can touch my bed at all points in the day to, you know, I, I don't have the opportunity to find a new spot to, you know, actually physically separate my, you know, my bedroom or where I do meetings and uh, where I do schoolwork. It's, it is all the same spot, unfortunately. Um, 
So I think, you know, creating that is certainly beneficial and, you know, to artificially create that, some of the things I've done is just, you know, to, you know, to get up out of my room and go around and talk to my roommates and, um, you know, six schedule times or plan times during the day to, to have lunch or to have food or, you know, grab a snack. And um, I certainly think that there is, you know, better ways to do it than I've been, I've been doing. I'm certainly interested in hearing some, uh, some, some better ways to uh, explore those options, but um, I've certainly tried, you know, various things such as kind of just, you know, grabbing a snack, going for a walk or, um, you know, things like that, just to actually kind of create that separation and say, okay, like now I'm, you know, here's a little break that I have or um, things along those lines. So, you know, certainly, you know, could be better in terms of creating that physical separation um, or creating that kind of mental separation truthfully. Um, but I've certainly tried a few things and just, you know, try to physically move if, you know, even though you're not moving to anywhere, it's still nice to get up and not be sitting all the time. And like, what does your day generally look like? It's, it's a good question. There's usually, you know, I think I have class every day. Um, so I'm usually in some form of class, it depends on the day, it could be anywhere from, you know, four or five hours to just two. Um, today's a nice day, I only have two hours of class. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, it kind of bounces around. I'll tend to have, you know, practice every day, if not like a workout, some kind of like, you know, sports specific practice. Um, and then our teams works out three times a day or three times a week. So, you know, a typical day will probably involve some kind of workout, uh, usually in the morning. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, probably some meetings scattered in between classes, um, throughout the day. Um, so I think, you know, good examples today, I guess I had workout in the morning, I ended up going to practice after workout and came back and had tutoring just before this. Um, so I was tutoring somebody and then I have, you know, talking with you now and then I have class this afternoon. Um, mm -hmm. And I think still waiting to schedule, but I might have another meeting kind of sprinkled in there somewhere as well. So mm -hmm. it tends to be a little, um, you know, this is a, a unusual day where my schedule isn't set in the morning. Um, but yeah, usually it tends to be, you know, a little hectic in terms of always on the phone and you know, talking to somebody, whether it be tutoring or in a meeting or, um, you know, working on a group project. And it's funny, one of my roommates actually was kind of making fun of me or commenting the other day about uh, she didn't remember the last time that I'd had a day without some kind of call with somebody. Um, cool. And kind of looking back to my schedule, I actually couldn't find one back until January, I think it was. So I'm always, cool. always on the phone with somebody, which, you know, is actually, I found really nice because it actually kind of keeps me engaged and I'm not just on my own and, you know, maybe listening to some music, but it's much more energizing to kind of actually verbally talk to somebody. And so I find that um, a benefit truthfully, rather than a drain, which is good. Okay. And um, do you have any, how do you actually keep yourself in a good mental space? Do you have any um, tips and advice to do so? Certainly. So I think it's one of the big things is just being okay with reaching out to you know, your friends and people close to you um, when you need it. Um, I know that, you know, there's certainly been times this semester where I've certainly, you know, just struggled mentally and been you know, super stressed out and just not feeling good. And, um, you know, just having, you know, reaching out to some of my, you know, people, I mean, my coach is someone that I, you know, get along with really well and feel comfortable reaching out to, which has been fantastic. But, um, you know, for people not on athletic teams, I mean, some of my, my roommates, I feel really comfortable with as well and, and get to talk to them lots of you know, I'm not feeling great or even if they're not feeling great and just kind of being there for them. And I find, you know, that's more of a reactive approach to, you know, your well-being. Um, you know, from a proactive standpoint, I think, you know, particularly with the sun or the, the sun starting to shine a bit more kind of as we approach the summer months, um, getting outside as much as you can yeah. is something that I really, really enjoy. I mean, this morning, even I wasn't feeling amazing. Um, but just being outside for an hour and a half or so practicing, it's just really kind of, you know, lifted the mood and, you know, looking up at the blue sky and, um, you know, not shivering. It was just kind of a nice, a nice <laughs> get yourself excited. And so, um, that's certainly been kind of one of the ways to, uh, to keep myself in a, a good state. And do you have any encouragement for other students who might be also facing, um, similar situations as you, um, other student athletes, you know? Certainly. I mean, I think, you know, if I think about specifically for student athletes is you have, we kind of have, you know, as much as, you know, we've been distant this year, um, you know, we are still a family at S in SFU athletics and we, we certainly strive to be. 
Um, and so, you know, even though we're not necessarily, you know, seeing each other as often at game days or at, you know, events, there's certainly, um, you know, we're certainly still all there for each other if we need, need, need us to be. Um, and, you know, to a SFU student as well, I think, you know, I see just all, everyone at SFU as being, um, you know, generally very welcoming and very kind. And I know that um, even friends in your classes, you know, people that I've just met through group projects, um, they're, you know, everyone seems to be um, always looking to support each other and looking out for the best for each other. So, um, you know, even if, even as we are separated, I think there's, you know, lots of opportunity for, you know, finding connections and um, staying together with everyone. And so I certainly would encourage that as, as much as we can, despite the intimidation factor, it being virtual these days. Hey, um, I think that, that is all we have for today. Uh, thank you so much for um, being willing to be interviewed. And um, sure. for so what we hope to do with REC and uh, SFU Athletics is that if possible, um, as things start moving closer to being in person again, um, hopefully REC Promo can connect with the athletics team and then help to co-promote the games. Okay. Because um, yeah, it seems like <clears throat> from what we've noticed is that um, a lot of the athletes, the people mainly supporting them are generally just their friends and their family. So we want to, as we know how, how much um, the SFU athletic team actually works for the play in the NCAA. And we want to see if we can bring more students out to, to, to these games and to help create more awareness of our, our teams on campus. So yeah, that is the end goal to bring both parties together. That's awesome. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Really a challenging so, goal. So our so our stack is actually working kind of to increase engagement and mm -hmm. um, yeah, certainly be interested in uh, Yeah, uh, reach out to us, reach out to us. <laughs> yeah, because um, we try and organize events uh, generally for students. So mm -hmm. if, if maybe sometime in the summer, if you, if the teams actually have maybe time or something, we can try and do um, small outreaches where we, we more or less follow you, the teams down to their games or to their practices, and then we can do promotion for that. So okay. that might be pretty cool. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So um, awesome. I'll probably try and keep in touch with you um, on this and then we'll see how it can go in the summer because we will be planning some events as well. Great, sounds good yeah. then. Thank awesome. you so much. Right. Thanks for helping out. Thanks Have a good much. rest of your day. You as well. All right, I'll see you later. Okay, take care.